We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. We are um, going to be uh, teaching today. Um, we are hoping to be teaching today <laughs> on uh, the ten take heeds of the apostles. And uh, when we say take heed, that is the King James Version, literally, take heed. Um, we find that Jesus said take heed ten times in the four Gospels. We'll talk about that. And then the apostles throughout the rest of the New Testament, throughout the epistles, he, they make mention of ten things for us to take heed of. And uh, we've, we've um, went back through the ten things that Jesus taught here several months ago. Today, we're going to talk about the apostles' end of it. Now, in the New Testament, this word, these words in the uh, King James, take heed, is one Greek word, and that is prosekio. And that is translated in order for us to get the meaning of it into uh, take heed. It kind of like be, say the word beware. Beware is one word, and uh, but... But it may be that in a certain language, take heed gets more of the meaning, uh, more exacting. And so the uh, King James translators technically, uh, um, William Tyndale laid the foundation for the English translation. And so, so he did it and then the King James translators followed suit with William Tyndale. But figuratively... Uh, it means to hold the mind towards, take heed. That means focus, hold your mind there, pay attention to. It also infers be cautious about, amen. Also means apply oneself to, adhere to. It's, it's, it's quite a word. It's quite a word. And so we pay attention, holding our mind cautiously and making application, adhering to what we are being told or what we are reading or what we're being informed about. We take heed in several directions. Again, uh, it is used in other places as give attendance unto, give attendance unto reading Again, the word beware is used in be given to, or these ten times take heed. Okay? Now, Jesus uh, gave us ten things to take heed of. The um, first one is in Matthew 6, verses 1 through 6, ultimately culminating in take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Now, sometimes we do give offerings before men. But be, take heed, make sure you're not doing that to be seen of them. Don't do it to be seen of them, just to be a show. People that do that to make a show of it, um, Jesus had other words, I guess I could say, verily, verily, I say unto you, they have the reward. <laughs> if that's the reason they did it, was to be seen and show out then they have their reward if they're doing it from 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 truly good altruistic um, motives of wanting just to be what God wants them to be, etc. That's different. So we need to take heed of that. He said in sixteen six of Matthew, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, for they say and do not. The leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees was their hypocrisy. They would say, but they would not do. They would say, but they would not do. I remember times my father um, 
and I, my, he was my stepdad. I loved him, and and it was, and he'd be upset with me over drinking, smoking, etc. And he always drank beers, and he always smoked cigars or pipes. And I'd say, "You drink and smoke." He said, "Don't do what I do. Do what I say." Well, that only goes so far, and. Um, So Jesus said, we have to be careful of any ways to being like that. Matthew 18, 10, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. There needs to be something, a respect, regard, a consideration, amen, for new converts, for children, amen. And uh, and, and that, that applies across the board. There needs to be something in us that does not despise anybody in the kingdom. You don't know Nobody but God knows all the details. Only God knows all of the potential. So we need to, well, I don't want to reteach this lesson, so I'm going to move on. Matthew 24, 4, take heed that no man deceive you, saying, here is Christ, take heed, beware of false doctrines. Mark 4, 23, take heed what you hear. We've got to be careful what we listen to and how we hear, etc. Mark 13 and 9, take heed to yourselves. They shall deliver you up to councils. We need to take heed, beware that not everybody gets excited that we live for God. There are things such as persecutions that arise around the world. Sometimes anything from, from uh, at your school or at your workplace or among family or among uh, friends, former friends, etc. Uh, just take heed. It could be to the place you get delivered up before it's over. Luke 11, take heed therefore that the light which is in you be not darkness... In other words, we got to make sure motives, amen, intentions, things are based on that which is right. Self is not woven into it. Uh, we got we to be careful that the light that's in us does not take on shades of darkness because of motives that are not right before God. Luke twelve fifteen. take heed, beware of covetousness, speaks for itself. Don't be covetous of anything that is thy neighbor's or of others, etc. Luke 17, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. Take heed, amen, that we understand the power of forgiveness. Luke 10, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting drunkenness cares of this life, that we get embedded into the things of this life and they engulf us. As, as a Pastor Booker teaching recently on uh, can you throw Jezebel out the window in the last analogy that was given about the man that would sell the honey and the flies would come by and he'd whoosh him away, but there's one fly, he got two he got in the honey and he got stuck. You weren't going to wish whisk him away. He had to be plucked out and then sold to the next unsuspecting customer, I'm sure. But he made the point. He said, that's like people in this world. God has given us all things richly to enjoy, but not all things are expedient. And you, can, and you need to eat, but let's don't be surfeiting. It's one thing, Chris, you can't make... Christmas Day every day, and uh, Christmas dinner every breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you, we have to just be careful of that. And and cares of this life, we know that life has things we have to take care of, but don't become so engulfed in cares of this life that they swallow. So Jesus said to take heed of this. Well, he was teaching the apostles, and then of course God made the apostle Paul an apostle, and the apostles. Give us things to take heed of. There's things that we need to pay attention to. And we're going to look at those. In the book of Acts chapter 20, the apostle Paul was not, of course, one of the original 12. He was born out of due season, his statement. And he was risen up by God to be the apostle to the Gentiles. The apostle to the Gentiles. And so he speaks to the Ephesian elders... These were the pastors throughout 
the city and area known as Ephesus. He has called them to Miletus. They've come together and he's, he's speaking to them. He has told them, you will see my face no more. And they wept. But he's warning them and he says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Here is a take heed that is to ministry, amen, that they take heed to themselves and they take heed to the flock because he purchased it with his own blood. God is a spirit. This bloodless God was born through a virgin named Mary and he became humanity to shed his own blood. Amen. And so if he shed his blood for us and for the flock, then we need to take heed that we take care of it. He said, verse 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Grievous wolves shall enter in. Paul in another place made this statement. Everybody ready? I don't care how good a pastor somebody is, how good a bishop somebody is. I don't care how hard we try, how hard we work. Listen to me. Jesus said, heresies must come. Divisions must come. Somewhere, someplace, sometime, somebody's going to latch on to a spurious, crazy, goofy doctrine. And they're going to... And, 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 and the impression will be that they have special insights that they see and they know. One that's floating around the country. I don't tell this, but when I was first introduced to the truth in 1972, I was, I was 19, and they introduced me to the truth of baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, all of that, and it's in the book, and you've all heard it, but be that as it may, when I, I had repented, I was very repentant when I met, and God was trying to give me the Holy Ghost at home. I didn't know what it was. And I got the revelation. They told me. They showed me. Well, I ran from it. I backslid from my repentance. And then one night, in broken, horrible condition, I said, God, I'll do anything. Get me out of here. And God spoke to a friend of mine, 650 miles away. He said, arise, go get Larry. He's ready now. And he drove 650 miles and picked me up. Took me back to the church where I had no idea what they believed, but they, they believed in thorough repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So what I ran from, I ran into their arms in Oklahoma, and I got saved. I went back a little over a year later and um, had uh, my newlywed, Brenda, and I went back to see those people they had got swallowed up in what was called the Yahweh doctrine. And, and you couldn't say Jesus, you had to say Yahweh. You couldn't say Paul, you had to say Saul. You couldn't say Peter, you had to say Cephas. Like God doesn't know the language of English, you know. And, and, and it was, it was in, I'm just sorry, it was goofy. And, uh, and, and they swept up in it. And through the years... I remember being at a conference, being surrounded by these people, giving me all this. And, and I'm thinking, Jesus, had you not kept your hand on me and taken me to Oklahoma, I could have been swallowed up in that stuff. These people went to the point, to the place, they got so, they had to be back, that the men were wearing robes and standing on street corners. And I mean, it was like, well... Things happen. Weird stuff comes. And there's all kind. I've watched it through the years. The job of ministry is to know that kind of goes around. We need to take heed to ourselves and to the flock. In verse 30, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking ver- perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Sometimes people rise up even in, in local congregations uh, giving spurious, crazy stuff. And, and you have to stop and say, no, 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 no. Now, this is for ministry. But listen, this is for everybody. We have families to protect. 
We have friends to protect. We need to take heed to ourselves and to our children. We need to take, it's good to teach your kids the truth. They shouldn't just hear Acts 2.38, one God, Jesus name, Holy Ghost, righteousness out of the mouths of the ministry. I mean, that needs to be taught and lived out and seen in the homes so that kids know, you know, this is my world. This is, this is my world. So this is a take heed. This is a take heed, amen, to all of us. Take heed to ourselves and take heed to those that are under us. Here's another one. Again, this is Paul. Paul gives us many of these take heeds. Romans eleven twenty one. He said, for if God spared not the natural branches, speaking of the Jewish people's the Jewish physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Jewish nation. Amen. And now he's, he, he is breaking those branches off. He is engrafting Gentiles. This is what happened in the, king, in the dispensation of grace in the kingdom. And so we're part and parcel of the root and the stump. But branches were broken off. Unbelieving Uh, born after the flesh, Jews, if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he spare not thee. If he came to the place he had to break off somebody else to get us in, take heed, we don't live such a shoddy life, he has to break us off in order to put somebody else in. Take heed that we don't do that. Let me give this to you, Taylor. And it goes on. But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the Jews have been broken off and new Gentiles who were branches from, we might say, a wild olive tree were grafted in. So now you too receive the blessing God has promised to Abraham and his children, sharing in God's rich nourishment of his own special olive tree. But you must Be careful not to brag about being put in to replace the branches that were broken off. Remember that you are important only because. Boy, isn't that the truth? If we have any importance, it's only because you are now a part of God's tree. You are just a branch, not a root. Amen. The root's been here a long time. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Has been around a long time. We're just hooked up by his mercy to the root. Well, you may be saying, those branches were broken off to make room for me. So I must be pretty good. Now, Taylor's a prayer phrase, you understand. He said, watch out. Remember that those branches, the Jews were broken off were broken off because they didn't believe God. And you are there only because you do. Do not be proud, be humble and grateful and careful. Take heed, take heed. We're here by grace. We're here and we're thankful. We're deeply, deeply thankful. But we know, Paul said, I know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing. If there's any good thing in us, it's that we, he is in us. We received his spirit. We took on his name. Jesus, amen, means Jehovah Savior. We took on his name. The only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He came and lived in us. He washed away our sins. We took on his name and he plopped us into the tree. And that's why if we have anything or are anything, it's his mercy. By his grace, we stand. We stand by grace through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. So we got to be careful. We got to be mindful. We be thankful. We're thankful. And we're certainly not ashamed. We're thankful, but we're not proud. Amen. So we need to take heed of that. For if God did not spare the branches he put there in the first place, he won't spare you either. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He is very hard on those who disobey, but very good to you if you continue to love and trust him. But if you don't, 
you too will be cut off. We don't want that. We do not want that. Can you say amen? So we need to take heed to the take heeds, praise God. 1 Corinthians 3, Paul was hooked up. Verse 9, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Okay? The church is, is God's vineyard. The church is God's building. We're workers together with him. Amen. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. This is speaking to both personally and ministerially. That people need to, that ministers, we, this is the foundation. We have it. It is this, it is this gracious, amen, death, burial, resurrection gospel that we are established with. That's the foundation. As ministers, we need to take heed how we build thereon. And, and again, ministry as builders is, is, is very, very important what they do, how they do it. And you've, you've heard me say this many times. The three main things he gives us is the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and the man of God. Well, of those three, which has the most immediate effect... It is the man of God because he's supposed to operate in the spirit of God with the word of God. Those are the two main things he utilizes. And and so he is the preacher and the teacher, etc. And if you don't believe that that the local minister has a great effect, all you have to do is look at different one God, Jesus' name, apostolic churches. They're all over this area. They're all over this nation. They're all over this world. And why... And some of them are so much alike and it's so beautiful, but some of them are so different, it's unbelievable. Well, it has to do with the ministry. It has to do with the ministry. And so he's telling ministers, you better take heed how you build thereon. We've got one foundation, you better take heed. But let's take that, there's a, there's a, there's a deeper truth in that. You and I individually, everybody's a builder. Jesus said, he that heareth and doeth these sayings of mine, I will liken him to a wise man that built his house upon a rock. And the winds came and the rains came and the winds blew. Amen. And beat upon that house, but it did not fall. Somebody else built a great house, but he didn't get it down on the rock. He didn't, he didn't obey the sayings of Jesus. And the rain came and the winds blew. And great was the fall of that house because they didn't, build it right. They didn't build it right. They didn't get it on that foundation. So us personally, everybody has, and everybody's a builder. We have to build our lives correctly. Amen. There's some warnings there, how we build. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Notice these are, these, are, these are going down in degrees of value. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So we got to take heed what we're building on this truth out of. Amen. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. We have to take heed how we build. And I read a story one time about a Pentecostal minister. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I, I wish I had the, the statistics in uh, before me, but be that as it may, he was, laying, he was in an easy chair taking a Sunday afternoon rest before service that night. And he said he had a vision. An angel came before him. And the angel reached into his bosom. He brought something out. A crucible appeared in his hand. He put the, the, whatever the substance was out of the, out of the bosom of the minister into this crucible. The fire lit. And as it lit and burned, it began to 
settle into various degrees of what it was. He said, I have come to examine your zeal. And I forget exactly the percentages, but I know that he said, your ministry is based, I think it was 14% was pride of his organization or denomination. 17% was pride of his accomplishments. Another percentage was, was uh, basically, he didn't use these words, but self-aggrandizement was a certain percentage. And then he said, love of God, 4%, love of man, 3%. 93% of this man's ministry was wood, hay, and stubble. He told this. He said he saw the crucible. God showed him 93% of his ministry was wood, hay, and stubble. And 7% was gold and silver. That's pretty sad. But all of us, we will know what kind of work that we put out. It will be tried by fire, what manner it is. And so again, there's got to be something in us that beats in our heart that loves God, loves him, loves his truth, loves his people, loves his kingdom, and we do it as right as possible. I have have been the last month, I've got it in my prayer list, and it's in the top ten things that I pray for. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I probably shouldn't even tell you, but I, I've been praying, God, everything in me that's not like you, I want you to scrape it out of me. Down to every cell in my body, I want it scraped out. Pettiness, selfishness, pride, I want it scraped out every cell in my being. And, and God only knows how much is there to scrape. We can think we're doing pretty good and find out we ain't doing so hot. But I, I, want, I, want, I want to do it right. We're passing through one time. And as Brother Morton says, I'm getting closer to the end of the sidewalk. And when I step off the end of the sidewalk, I want it to be right. So every man's work shall be made manifest. We need to take heed to ourselves that we build this thing correctly. Then in 1 Corinthians 8, 9, again, but take heed, he said, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Let me, let me back up here. He's talking about um, several things here. Um, Paul understood, Simon Peter understood from the revelation that Jesus Christ gave him concerning Cornelius and how he revealed it to him with a sheet let down by the four corners and he saw every manner of unclean beast and the Lord spoke to Simon Peter said arise slay and eat he said not so Lord nothing common or unclean is entered into my mouth I've never I may be a fisherman that could cuss but I never ate uh, any unclean and the Lord said don't call that common or unclean that which I have cleansed and then he sent him to the House of Cornelius, and Gentiles were saved. And he realized things have changed. He's not only moving among Gentiles, but all of these things of the Old Testament, these, these, these truisms are now fulfilled, amen, in degrees of righteousness. And when you looked at the animals of the Old Testament that were clean and unclean, when it came to mammals... Basically, in order for an animal to be clean, it had to chew the cud and split the hoof, meaning it had to have an inward and outward sign that it was a clean animal. And in order for us to be clean or to be holy, we got to be right inwardly and outwardly to be clean. And he said, don't, don't do it. The camels chewed the cud and the camels had a split hoof, but it was only part way. You can't be right part way outside. Amen. And, 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 and hogs split the hoof, but they didn't chew the cud. So they were like hypocrites. They looked okay on the outside, but they weren't all right on the inside. And it goes on and on and on. So all of these things were lessons to us. And, and the 
and birds that could not be eaten were birds that were birds of prey or attack animals. They attacked other flesh or they were, or they were like buzzards. Other than that, you could eat birds if they were not birds of prey. Things of that nature. So all those things were teachers. There was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So that law, but, but there still could be Jewish people. They were so ingrained in that, that, that Paul said, I know I could sit down and eat a ham sandwich. But it may be a deal of conscience with this guy. So, so for his sake, I won't. This is back in his day. He, he said, so be careful that your liberty amen, doesn't cause somebody else to stumble because they have a weak conscience. And, uh, and so those, those things can be applied today. There are areas of which they can be applied today. Let me read this to you in the NIV. So then about eating food. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. The other thing was meat sacrificed to idols. Then they would sell it in the shambles. Paul said to us, there is but one God. And in Romans 14, he's covering the things I just covered here about things sold in the shambles. They may have been offering it up to their gods. Some serves it to you. You don't know. Just, just eat it. Don't worry about it. If they say, did you know this was a sacrifice to the idol? He said, don't eat it then. Not because it's going to hurt you. To us, there's but one God. But, but, but for the conscience of him that served it. You know, you're, you're, you're dealing with, with somebody's conscience here, okay? And um, so, so you have to be, be careful on doing that. So NIV puts this. So then about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know an idol is nothing at all in the world, and there's no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came, for whom we live. There is but one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, through whom we live. But not everyone knows this. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that uh, when they eat such food, they think it's having been sacrificed to an idol since their conscience is weak. It is defiled, but food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, nor better if we do eat. But be careful that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Here's a case in point. I knew of an individual that was at uh, a friend's house and and this friend had for years had never drank anything alcohol not a sip of one nothing their whole Christian life but there was a certain meal that made maybe once a year a certain dish and they would put in uh, some kind of an alcohol and then and I Okay, but anyway, but when they would bake it, it gets cooked out. There's nothing alcoholic about it. All of the alcohol is cooked out, and it leaves a, a, a certain flavor when mixed with sugars and this and that. Makes it supposedly good. I've never ate it. But anyway, so they were, they were doing it. They don't drink it. They cook out all the alcohol. They had it there. And, uh, and they, they had to go do something. And the person left in the room was looking at the bottle. And they used to have a real weakness. And they were going through a bad, bad time right then. And they grabbed the bottle and took two or three swigs. And then they put a little water in it to make it not look so bad. And it started them on a slippery slope. And they slid down the slope. They've caught themselves and did fine. And they're back on top. But technically, yeah, you're burning out the alcohol, this and that. But at the same time, that person was in a situation, it became a stumbling block. It became a stumbling block. And we have to be careful on things like that. We have to be very, very careful on things 
anything of that nature. We have to be very, very, very careful. Uh, um, man, we could go on and on and on forever. Paul said, take heed. We got to watch out for our brothers and our sisters. We have to be very, 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 very careful for our brothers and our sisters. There is a, there is a, a, a man in this church. I'm just going to tell you something. I was so proud of him. Man in this church, he's got some property and uh, some buildings on it. And, and somebody said, we want to rent it. He needed to rent it. And they said, we'll rent it for 10000 a month. He said, do what? 15000 What? They said, we'll, we'll give you that much money per month. He said, what are you going to do with that? They said, grow medical marijuana. He said, you could pay me 100000 a month. I wouldn't rent it to you. It ain't happening. And he wouldn't let, it, wouldn't let him do it. For that I say, God bless him. Okay? And could he quote, unquote, he wouldn't touch it? He wouldn't, he wouldn't. But he just thought, no, 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 no. That's what I call being careful. You follow me? All right. For if anyone with a weak conscience sees you who have this knowledge eating in the idol's temple, won't he be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against your brothers in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause him to fall. Take heed that we watch out for our brothers and sisters. Take heed that we're careful. Amen. For our brothers and our sisters. Amen. Here's another one in 10.12. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Amen. NIV. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. And one says be careful if you're thinking, oh, I would never behave like that. Let this be a warning to you, for you too may fall into sin. We have to have confidence in him, but not confidence in ourselves. Paul's confidence was in him, and John said, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And Jude said that. And so, and so yes, he's able to keep us. But I'm going to tell you something. It's as we've taught recently. God left Hezekiah to try him to see what was in him. And that's when he showed everything he had to the ambassadors of Babylon. And Isaiah said, they're going to come and take everything they saw. And they did. Not in his day, but in his children's generation. And so, I don't want God to leave me for five seconds. We need to take heed. God, if you've lived long enough, you know you need him every hour. You need him every... You need him every... Every hour. You need him every hour. We need him every hour. Okay, Galatians 5.15. Paul's writing to the church of Galatia. He says, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed, take heed, that you be not consumed one of another. Now the verse just before that is this. The entire law, all 613 uh, commandments given throughout the Old Testament, the entire law, technically the Pentateuch, the entire law is summed up in a single commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then he went on to say, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. All right? NIV says, if you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Taylor says, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love others as you love yourself. But if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always critical and catty, watch out. Beware of ruining each other. Amen. I don't like to be around catty 
people. I don't like to be around people that love talking negatively about other people. I don't like being around people that love gossip. I don't like being around people that are always finding fault with people. You know one reason I don't like being around them? That stuff can spread like a cancer. Negativity can spread. It can spread. And I may mention uh, preaching in Pigeon Forge about how uh, there's, a, there's a people in Papua New Guinea. Brother Mooney told me about them. And, and uh, these, these people, they cannot differentiate between the color blue and green. A certain tribal people. You can throw two swaths of cloth, red and green, however, they can't see the difference between those two colors. But you can get, you can get a piece of yellow paper, cut it in half, and same piece of paper. But the one on the left, they'll say that color, and they've got a name for that color, and the one on the right will have a different name for it. And everybody in the tribe will look at those two pieces of paper and say, yes, this, and yeah, no, that's that. And then you can turn your back and turn the papers around and they'll say, you know, no, no, that's that color. And this is, and they're not kidding. They're not kidding. And so in checking all of this weird thing, business out, anthropologists have come to the place they believe that it isn't that their brains worked different and created a vocabulary to match those. They said they believe that their vocabulary changed the way their brains worked. So they threw some way back yonder. It got, it got carried on going this and vocabulary. They really believe that the vocabulary changed the way they see things. And I'm here to tell you, you run around with the wrong people, they will affect how you see things. They will affect how you see other people. Negative people will affect how you see revival. I know people that I think they despise revival. They don't even... You you tell them 10 people got the Holy Ghost, I doubt it. What kind of thinking is that? What kind of a mentality? But they've been around such negativity that it has affected the way they think and the way they view things. So, so you get around something like, and it's easy for them to talk about people. It's easy for them to backbite. It's easy for them to chew on other people. Well, Paul said, you better take heed because you're going to end up devouring one another up. You're going to chew on each other until you're dead. That's something to take heed of. You hear me? That is something to really take heed of. This is the reason the Bible said, don't even eat with a reviler. Someone that is given to reviling authorities, reviling people, reviling. He said, you got to keep, steer clear so bad you don't even eat with them. You don't even eat with them. You don't even eat with them. I remember one of, one of the boys that came out from under I.H. Terry, one of the most promising men I ever met in my life. Utterly, unbelievably brilliant. And really, the guys will tell you, he was one of his favorites. But he got to where he became a mocker of holiness, a mocker of righteousness, a mocker of standards, even to the point of questioning the, the uh, necessity of new birth and this and that. And, and one day he called Brother Terry and he said, Hey, Brother Terry, I'm in town. I'm going to take you out to eat. Brother Terry said, No, I can't go eat with you. Well, he said, I might be able to drink some coffee. I guess I could drink some coffee, but I can't eat with you. He said, why? He said, because the Bible says I can't eat with a reviler. You reviled everything I ever taught you. You revile what the scripture teaches. You make fun of it. I can't even eat with you. I might drink some coffee, but I can't eat. He got the point across. Amen. Amen. Because that stuff can affect you. It can affect you. So take heed. Take heed. Colossians 4.17. And say unto Archippus, take heed, 
to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. Archippus, this is a personal deal, but take heed to that ministry which you've received in the Lord that you fulfill it. And I may tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the work you have received in the Lord. Now that was to that man personally in his ministry. Can I just tell you that shoe will fit each of our feet some way, somehow, because all of us are supposed to do things for God. And we need to take heed that we complete whatever God wants us to do, whatever God wants us to be. Amen. There is no such thing as big or small. There's just the will of God. The will of God, big or small, doesn't matter. If it's two mites, amen, or whatever, it's, 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 it's whatever, whatever God wants. That woman gave two widows mites, and they say that Barnabas owned most of the Isle of Cyprus. And he sold all of it and laid the money at the apostles' feet. That did not impress Jesus any more than that little widow woman's two mites. It's just the will of God. Whatever it is that we are supposed to complete, we need to complete it and take heed that we do. First Timothy, Paul's writing to Timothy 4.16. Take heed unto thyself, Timothy, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. We need to take heed again to ourself and we need to take heed oh, to this doctrine. And we need to continue in them. Amen. In doing this, we'll save ourselves and them that hear us. We have to continue in them. Uh, and I mean, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Taylor, keep a close watch on all you do and think. Stay true to what is right and, right and God will bless you and use you to help others. I know of a man that was taught right um, and, and, and I really liked him. Anyway, uh, he no longer baptizes in Jesus' name. Um, I think if you say the word standard, he would say, I think that used to be gas station. I think there used to be gas stations called standard years ago. I mean, there's no concept. And, but he was telling a friend of mine, uh, he, he was telling you don't understand. He said, what are you doing? What are you, you don't understand. He said, I'm feeling God so strong these days. I'm feeling God as strong as when I first got the Holy Ghost. And my friend told him, he said, well, I don't doubt that a bit. I believe that. He said, because when you first got the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God led you and guided you into all truth, and you were feeling him, and it was beautiful. But once he got you in the truth, he found out, because they received not a love for the truth, God turned them over to a strong delusion. God turned them over to a strong delusion, that they might believe it die and be damned. Because they did not receive a love for the truth. He said, so God led you and guided you into this truth. Once he got you there, he found out you didn't love it. So now he's led you off into a delusion. I don't doubt that you're feeling him because he's leading you off into delusion. He found out you didn't like what he taught. I said, what did he say? He said, he didn't say nothing. Can I tell you something? We need to take heed to ourselves and to this doctrine and continue in it again. Not only for our sake, but for them that hear us. And for your children, for your family, for your friends. It fits all of us. Hebrews 3.12. And musicians, could you come? Take heed, brethren, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. There's got to be something in us that says, no, no, no. I'm going to take heed. I don't want there to be anything in my heart. No unbelief. Amen. Beware then of your own hearts, dear brothers, lest you find that they too are evil and unbelieving and you are leading uh, and are leading you away from the living God. Speak. Let's all stand. Speak to each other about these things every day while there is still time so that none of you will become hardened against God, being blinded by the glamour of sin. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as we did when we first became Christians, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. So we take heed. Okay, we take heed as a light that shines in a dark place and the day star arise. We just take heed to the word of God. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Where until you do well that you take heed as a light that shines in a dark place. So, 
Here they are. We take heed unto ourselves and to the flock. We take heed because God spared not natural branches. We want him to spare us. We take heed how we build on this foundation. We take heed lest our liberties become a stumbling block to somebody else. We care for our weaker brethren. Amen. We take heed lest we fall. We're glad we're standing, but we take heed. We don't bite and devour. We want to take heed that we don't get consumed. We take heed to the ministry, to the call, the will of God in our life. We take heed to ourselves and to this doctrine. We take heed, amen, lest there be an evil heart of unbelief. And we take heed to this more sure word of prophecy than we do anything else. Praise God. That's what God does. And that's what we take heed to. Anybody thankful? Praise God. Let's lift our hands and love him. He's in this house. We love you, Jesus.